Hi, uh, welcome to a series of uh, videos that will uh, give you the, the basics for 3D Studio Max 2020. Uh, Max 2021 has just come out, but I'll, uh, I'll check everything we do against that and just make sure it's all the same. So we're, we're going to work on a, on a house called House T um, by Tsukano Architects in uh, Japan. And this is what we're going to end up with. This is a, a 10 minute render using the ART renderer in Max. This is, this is a 10 minute render and this is by comparison here's just a 2 minute render in the, the ground floor of the house. Uh, this render is in the upper floor of the house. So without messing around let's get uh, started. Uh, the, the videos are going to be broken up into quite a lot of smaller chunks um, just for editing purposes really and just to make it kind of tie in with a, a PDF handout that I've also generated which you'll find in the description. Uh, so that will expand on a few points uh, and might cover a few points that I haven't covered in the videos. Okay so before you before you bring in a model um, you're best to check the unit setup. Um, generally when you start 3D Studio Max it's in generic units which isn't very controllable you don't really know what you're working with so I would generally go straight to customize unit setup okay and I would generally work in metric meters and the system unit setup one unit equals one meter okay there's a a device down here which sets the accuracy level for the software. I wouldn't adjust this uh, but what you do need to bear in mind is that your models should really be very close to the origin because if they're not then this accuracy factor comes into play and if your models are very very long way from the origin uh, you can end up with a model that looks atrocious it's all broken up and the crumpled and you don't know what's going on and sometimes the software won't even work very well it, it just won't let you zoom the, the 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 coordinates are just too big for it to deal with okay so one unit equals one meter okay and system unit setup sorry the, and the display units are meters as well and this helps when you're dealing with lighting it makes it much more kind of workable you can understand how big a light spread is going to be uh, and that kind of thing okay so when you first open the the, the software you you generally face with just a, a single viewport and what's behind this is a four viewport setup which can be configured if you just want two or three or six whatever you want but to show the other viewports we use this button in the very bottom corner here maximize viewport toggle okay so the the viewport that has the yellow edge is the current viewport okay so if I move over to this one and click once left is now the current viewport if I maximize it it's the left viewport that fills the screen okay do you get the idea so you're kind of going backwards and forwards maximizing and minimizing click the top one maximize there we go so down here we've got the the display controls uh, just watch what happens to this icon when I swap from a top view which is an orthographic view to the perspective view okay notice some of these icons can change depending on the type of view that you're in okay the rest of the screen is uh, pretty standard to this kind of software uh, you, you tend to find these fully fully featured rendering and modeling packages are quite complex generally but you basically do the same operations over and over again so once you kind of got the sequence pretty much every project is the same you're just using maybe different materials or different bitmaps to create materials okay so we've got drop down menus from the top there's a standard toolbar here which if you're if you're working on a small display that scrolls uh, down the side we have the the main kind of control settings panels and this is broken into six so we've got create modify hierarchy motion display and utilities okay display is quite different from 
the way you work in other software um, it's, it's quite easy to work with you basically switch items on and off you hide them or show them uh, you can also freeze and thaw them which is a bit more common okay but it is quite easy to, to to work in that manner I find it much more friendly to use than layers which can uh, all have very similar names and the likes okay so we've got the video con the display controls here next to that we've got some animation controls which we won't be covering in this set of tutorials and this strange ruler looking device is actually a timeline for animation okay in the middle here we've got some uh, settings for coordinates which are quite useful to keep an eye on if you're wanting to reposition objects you can get a, a feeling for how far you're moving something using these or you can be much more controlled as well you can work very roughly or crudely in 3d studio or you can work very accurately it's up to you um, it's really all about the what the image looks like at the end of the day if however you get there is really you know nobody's wrong or right okay so what we'll do is we'll pull in the the CAD file give it a little tidy up and then we'll stop the video at that point okay now there is something missing you if you've just started if you just first time you've used 3d studio you'll find that you've got a a, uh, a what's called a scene explorer on this side now I because I'm working on a laptop I really can't afford the space on my screen to have that visible all the time it looks pretty much like this kind of tucked in at the side okay so it's, it's a bit smaller than this usually okay but I prefer to call that up when I need it so you can drag the scene explorer into this into the scene into the screen and you can close it if you wish if you've got a big monitor you know by all means just keep it on but I generally kill it off and then just call on it whenever I need it okay so we want to import our drawing file so it's import import from the desktop I'm looking for house T complete and open okay it's had a little look inside the file found a few things it isn't too sure about but it's still gonna let us carry on so do you want to import this file yes okay the settings are important um, better to get these sorted out straight away rather than trying to catch up later so check that the incoming units are millimeters that's the that's the units that were used in the AutoCAD drawing but we want them to, to be rescaled to suit the units inside max so a tick in rescale and we end up with a model that's a kind of a more manageable size okay down in the geometry options we want to any we want to join objects together so anything that has a gap of three millimeters or less will be joined together bigger than three millimeters and it's going to leave a gap okay auto smoothing adjacent faces we don't need that it's a very angular building so that's switched off and orient normals consistently this is where the the software tries to decide which way is inside and outside and get everything facing the right way okay watch out for the welding threshold if you have a very very small model uh, you know that might not be sufficient for you to work with so okay that and we should see some geometry okay the perspective view is looking quite strange everything's everything's black in there can't really see what's going on I could change from default shading to clay and that would reveal the shape of the model I'm going to use the orbit command here and I can turn this around and inspect the model the very dark surface here that implies that that's facing the, the wrong way so that's what they mean about the face normals most of the things here they're kind of light means they're facing outwards this one is facing inwards it's not a big deal okay you don't need to worry about it okay some uh, some objects in there are still showing with with lines now those are those are shape objects so that's not geometry that we can work with 
So that's something that we could weed out. Now, there's a couple of ways of doing that. If you look at the scene explorer, we've now got lots of objects in the scene. Most of them have got a circle next to their name, implying that they're geometry. But some of them, like this one, have got a circle and a square. So that means it's a shape object. So if I click on that and OK, I've got control of one object. I can see a little set of axes has gone towards it. If I press the delete key, that disappears. OK, one at a time could be a bit laborious. You can click one, then hold control and click more. So that's given me multiple objects. So there's three sets of axes showing now. Press delete. OK, a quicker way is to use a filter. If I just set the filter to shapes, I can only pick shapes. Use this tool to select objects and click and drag over the whole model and then any remaining shapes have been selected. It's only found two more. There's a very pale grey two in here saying two shapes selected. Press delete and there you go. So there's no more shapes in the drawing. So it's just it just takes up space in the list. It's just pointless having them there. They can't be rendered. We can't do anything with them. We don't need them. Another way of making the model more visible is to add edged faces onto the view. Okay, it gives it a bit more definition. What I'm going to do though is go back to default shading with edged faces and that's where we're going to leave things just now. Okay, we're just ready to put our first material on. So we'll stop the video at this point. Okay, thank you very much.